Hey guys, Kane Harrison here. On today's What's Up Nashville, we have got an incredibly important topic to the city of Nashville and the state of Tennessee. We're gonna talk with Andy Van Room from FilmCon and Mike Piggott from McNeely, Piggott and Fox about the film industry, how we can get it into Nashville and how we can all get involved. Guys, uh, first of all, perhaps if we could get a little bit of insight into your background, Andy, first. Uh, well, I think most relevant to Nashville is that uh, there's an organization in town called Film Nashville. We serve about 2,500 uh, individuals and businesses related to film and television. I'm the founding president of that. Uh, we do uh, quite a few events and seminars. We've produced uh, 10 year, 11 years of the Nashville 48 Hour Film Project. Matter of fact, we just concluded that. Uh, we do an annual uh, film television town meeting with all the film organizations and schools uh, and public offices in the area, including the Tennessee Film Commission. Uh, this last year, Mayor Carl Dean participated in that when we gave an award to uh, Beth Curley, who's uh, president of uh, Nashville Public Television. We also produce now uh, FilmCom, which is um, an annual international film television business mm -hmm. market that basically focuses on providing financing and distribution for feature film, television, and documentary works in progress. That sums it up. It sums it up very well. And Mike, you're here, um, of course, a massive friend of Talkopolis and, and you love to pop in from time to time, which is fantastic. Mike, one of the reasons uh, he is here is because of just what Andy has said. Most people would not know that that goes on in Nashville and it's interesting and we'd like to change the perception of that and hence Mike being on the show. So Mike, just tell the viewers who haven't met you before your background. Well, it's uh, I'm pretty stable in my work. I've only <laughs> had two jobs really. One was as a newspaper reporter for 12 and a half years with the old Nashville banner and I was investigative reporter, uh, courthouse reporter and most of my time was on Capitol Hill as the political editor. Uh, and then when I left that job, I helped start this firm Actually, one of my partners started the firm, and I joined him 25 years ago, and uh, we've grown now. We have 65 people, and we're in the public relations business, just helping people communicate in various ways. I've been involved a little bit in politics in that I was Mayor Bredesen and then later Governor Bredesen's uh, communications director in three of his campaigns. And Mike, one of the one of the things I see here is that uh, is the perception of Nashville and the availability of being able to bring TV and film to Nashville and funding that goes with that. Um, obviously, one of your roles is to make Nashville as attractive as possible. Do you, what sort of problems do you see with that, with the research that you've done? Well, I think that Nashville is very, very well perceived nationally. We're, we're in the top 10 of all these different, you know, most livable city, most business friendly city, and, and we have a tremendous image in many ways out there. Uh, we brand we consciously branded ourselves music city mm -hmm. and so if you have a, a film like country strong we're the place to be it, it, it's i guess the only question i have is does that limit us sometimes in our marketing and there there was a bill passed in 2007 that created some incentives and a system a very good system i think but maybe you know not funded to the level everybody in the industry would like uh, to bring films to Tennessee and, and so I think people are, are very serious about it on Capitol Hill and in, in statewide as well as here locally but that also limits what you can do. Mm -hmm. And Andy I know I mean you are submerged in this the, the film and TV industry here and done amazing things and I hear all the time like the 48 hour film festival helps independent musicians in town, helps producers in town, helps the actors in town, it's a brilliant uh, festival that you run. To you, there may not be the wrong perception and there may be a lot of stuff going on in Nashville, but I'd love to hear your opinion on, on that and how you think we can develop outside entities coming in and making films and TV. Well, I think, uh, you know, speaking of the film world, I think there are two different uh, aspects of it. One gets a lot of publicity and the other one really doesn't. The one that gets a lot of publicity is you know, the third oldest uh, film festival in the country is right here in Nashville. It's called the Nashville Film Festival. It's now going on its 45th year. And we're all extremely proud of that. And uh, it, uh, it is an Academy Award qualifying festival. Uh, it gets a lot of notoriety. It's a great cultural event. And it gets the cover story in the Nashville scene, I think, running like 12, 13 years at this point. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and uh, so we all really care about that festival. The other side is really more the industry side. And um, we're not really interested in promoting it to the general public, um, and we haven't really been thus far. So perhaps the general public is not really aware of what you know, we've been doing. Uh, mainly what we have done is constructed uh, you know, events and symposia and uh, you know, uh, basically uh, arranged for entities that are interested in developing feature films and know how to do business plans. Documentary filmmakers are, uh, have been given education about doing grants, proposals. People that want to develop television series have been given the ammunition to develop television show bibles and packages. Uh, Filmcom, uh, I think, addresses your point to some specificity in that that event is an annual event that takes place in the front end of the National Film Festival now. Mm -hmm. We basically do it in a week's worth of events where we bring in uh, financiers and the equity and the lender side. We bring in uh, studio executives and television executives. We bring in people from American Public Television and entities that are related to the PBS system. Uh, and we you know, market that through an entity called Without a Box, which is a subset of the IMDb Internet Movie Database to about 300,000 filmmakers around mm. the planet. Filmcom currently brings in uh, you know, filmmakers from around the country, from around the region, from around Nashville, and from other continents. So we've had them as far away as Australia. Uh, and a matter of fact, we have people from Australia now come every year to Filmcom. We've had them as far as Argentina, uh, Brazil, uh, you know, the uh, UK and France and Romania, so they're coming in from all over the place, Singapore as well. But the main thing is that, you know, we're trying to build a pragmatic bridge, and I would say at this point we have established pragmatic bridges because some of the executives are, you know, from DreamWorks Animation, Langstein Company, Lionsgate, we brought them in mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, bona fide connectivity, and we brought in East West Bank. So the entire idea is to try to fuse together all the elements that are necessary uh, for the financing structure of any independently financed project. And that usually involves some equity, meaning cash, uh, some foreign pre-sales, or some foreign uh, um, you know, uh, projections, uh, some outright foreign sales uh, for a one film project, some service equity deals, some gap financing. So basically when you put together the structure, financing structure of a single film, it's basically going to be a com composite of many different types of uh, funding coming together to do that. So Filmcom basically is now doing that. We're going to our fifth year. We've taken over the entire downtown area. All of our executives and filmmakers are housed at the Hilton National Downtown. We do events at the Skirmerhorn, the Country Music Hall of Fame, uh, Titan Stadium. We're now looking at moving into the Music City Center. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's extraordinary to sit and listen to a lot of that. I'm, I'm involved in film and music, and I deal with a lot of people in LA. And it, the, I think the perception, I, and I guess that is the problem, there is a perception that a lot of that stuff doesn't go on in Tennessee. And um, let's just talk about incentives. Um, I know I, I deal with a lot of people who say to me, why should I come to Tennessee to make a film when I can go to Louisiana and there's tax credits or breaks or I can go to the Carolinas and there's tax credits or breaks. We were just involved in a film that was filmed in San Antonio with a bunch of people from LA. They relocated because they had a bunch of, you know, the city got behind them and did, did a lot of stuff. We've recently seen that with Nashville um, and the city coughed up a little bit of funds to get them to come to begin with and then to make them stay. And I think it was some $20 million over two seasons. Um, Mike, I'll ask you this question. How do you think we can go about changing the perception and letting people know all this stuff is going on that Andy's doing that I guess a lot of people just don't know that aren't industry specific and get more people to the town because of it? Well, there are several selling points and, and, and the fact that some of the Nashville cast has now moved to Nashville and become <coughs> residents of Nashville and have gotten really seriously involved in our community is a very good sign. And, and I think there are other things that, that come into play. For instance, we don't have any state or local income tax. And so those people are drawing a check from, for their work here and not paying that tax that they would be paying if, if the, it was filmed in New York or any number of other states mm -hmm. that, that charge for that. Uh, the cost of living here is lower than, say, filming in L.A. or somewhere else. And so when they consider what's in it for them, to be here, and, and that includes the producers and, and the, the people funding the operation as well as the actors and everybody else. 
this is a good bargain for someone. Plus, we have such uh, the, the state itself presents every kind of geographic opportunity there is from the flatlands of West Tennessee to the mountains of East Tennessee and Middle Tennessee has a little of both. Uh, we, have, we have plenty of scenery. There are things like the, the old Tennessee State Prison where Robert Redford shot a movie mm -hmm. that has been preserved for that purpose, for, for use in, in film. Uh, I looked at the, the Film Commission's website today and it had a list of all the things they're looking for. It's really interesting. If you want to have your home or business in a movie, you can do it. They're looking for uh, homes, beauty parlors, funeral parlors, you, know, you, you <laughs> name it. They're looking for all kinds of places to film and those are always in demand so th there are the the state is proactively working toward what those what those companies need and maybe we're not doing it at the same level financially as other places but we seem to be really aggressively pursuing it in in organizations that, that are peripheral peripherally supporting that mm -hmm. are hugely important so i, I think that the, the whole picture is pretty bright for tennessee it's just a matter of getting the word out well, I think that that's exactly right. I think if we can get together and have the rest of the world know what goes on here, and I think, as Andy's mentioned, there, are, there is a Nashville Film Festival. It is held in such high esteem, but I don't hear anyone saying, hey, let's flock to Nashville for the Film Festival. I hear, let's go to Sundance, let's go to South by Southwest. And I don't know whether it's because those festivals, uh, you, you know, have a little bit more uh, interest because of the music element and because of everything else that goes with it. Perhaps you can touch on that, Andy. Um, do you feel the same way? Do you think if we added different elements to that and sort of got someone like Mike's involvement in building that up, that we could entice more people to come to Nashville than perhaps the powers that be? We won't so much be the music city, we might be the entertainment city. Um, well, I think that um, the the key phenomenon around why uh, Sundance and South by Southwest and Toronto and Cannes and to some degree Berlin um, are uh, the Bernal, Bernal, uh, sorry, um, are, you know, have notoriety in the larger sense for film is because of the fact that they have distribution companies coming to those festivals. Uh -huh. Because uh, when you actually have, um, when you actually have executives who are coming to a festival that are looking to pick up new product, that tends to what differentiate Sundance and Toronto and South by Southwest and, uh, and can, those can markets from the, from the rest of the festivals that are around the world. Mm -hmm. One of the very reasons that we basically, uh, Filmcom is a standalone entity, but we basically do it in conjunction with the National Film Festival, and we've been building that over the last four years, is so that in point of fact, we have a two-week block of events and we do have distributors coming to town, and those distributors are now staying for the National Film Festival. Fantastic. We have a, so we have a, a week's worth of uh, Filmcom, and the film festival is now expanded to over a week, so we have more than two weeks now worth of film events. The film festival focuses almost every day on some kind of musical component. Uh, we are now uh, interested in talking to, or actually have talked to Leadership Music about doing their digital summit. Mm -hmm as part of this two-week block so that we basically can have uh, film and music and, uh, and you know, move into the uh, digital realm and then ultimately into video gaming. So I think that the seeds for you know, a South by Southwest or a South by Southeast or that kind of environment are in fact already underway uh, in a very uh, large terms because we've been downtown and now the National Film Festival is moving downtown uh, and so some major effects are going to be happening in 2014 and beyond, including taking over Music City Center. And we're also now working with a, a, some, an entity called the Full Moon uh, Festival, which basically focuses on uh, aspects related to the suspense, thriller, and horror genre. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a, an expo component to Filmcom. So we basically took over uh, the east end of, uh, the west end actually of Titan Stadium last year. And we had, um, uh, many uh, booths, basically a trade show for new film, television, and documentary projects. And we're going to be coupling at the Music City Center with the National Film Festival and the Full, Full, Full Moon Festival to do an expo at the Music City Center, which basically has nothing but booths related to entertainment. Pretty much, you know, along the lines of a, uh, of a uh, Comic-Con. Obviously, it's not going to be that big mm -hmm. yet, but we basically want to do uh, probably the only trade show in the world that focuses completely on works and projects. Mm -hmm. uh, 
works in progress. So, but the you know that answers your question about why maybe the National Film Festival, uh, even though it's a fantastic festival, you know, is not regarded like a, Sun, a Sundance or a Toronto or a South by Southwest. But we are in fact taking deliberate steps to do that. I know that Butch Spiridon, a mutual friend of ours, uh, head of the National CVB, now called the uh, CVC Corporation, uh, is way in the middle of all that. And he's very helpful to our organization and the National Film Festival. And basically every other organization is related to that. As a matter of fact, we are now working with the CVC and the, and the mayor's office, Matt Wilshire, in ECD, to start a film, television, transmedia council that will basically have every nonprofit organization in every school uh, related to higher education and some of the academies and public offices that relate to film, television, and transmedia on one council, basically a mayor's council for transmedia, mm -hmm. film, and television. So there's quite a bit underway. Uh, we may not be marketing to the public, but really we're, more, we're really more business oriented and we're not really trying to promote some kind of like popular event to, this, to you know, the population like fanfare. That's sure. really not what we're doing. Sure. Don't you have to market to the public though to to spur the kind of investment from the legislature and others, I mean, both from the community and from the from the, the governmental bodies, it isn't supporting your case with the general public in the best interest of everybody, rather than just. I agree, to and you're it. you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we could definitely use that, um, you know, to a large degree. But you know, uh, Film Nashville was, uh, you know, a statewide coordinator in 2006 for the film incentives that we. Mm -hmm. initially got we worked with uh, you know we were asked to get involved by the then Tennessee Film Commission at that time uh, a gentleman named David Bennett working with Jan Poole and uh, they had the foresight basically to say that we needed a film incentive and mm -hmm. they actually mounted a campaign across the state to uh, and did a commission to study for a film incentive program they then asked us to help uh, you know facilitate you know getting that legislation passed Film Nashville worked with uh, the Memphis Film Commission and the Commission in Knoxville at the time, uh, and uh, some folks in Chattanooga, along with her uh, then uh, National Film Officer, Tessa Atkins. Uh, and we managed to get uh, our first ever film incentives passed that year as a, as a community effort. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, at the end of the day, the commission, the work that, the, the funding that we got uh, was not really by beating pots and pans. It was really just through quiet backdoors discussion with uh, some legislators. The public didn't know a thing about it until after we'd already done it. The funding that we got from uh, from uh, for FilmCom, we honored as a recurring grant, was actually a very quiet lunch, and we had uh, uh, Representative Harry Tindall, who's head of the Black Hole Committee for the legislature, uh, then talk to uh, Representative Charles Sargent. And uh, one of my uh, 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 cohorts in film, uh, com, film Nashville, uh, Mr. Dick Brown, talked to uh, Senator Norris, and we basically had three people involved who got us recurring funding from the state of Tennessee. So luckily, we had bipartisan support, and the governor's administration has been a real, real champion of ours. But it, it never happens through making a lot of noise. No. So we are basically, you know, business people <laughs> trying to make things happen for people who want to be in the business of film, television and uh, now transmedia. But I think, you know, carrying that message to the public at large is an important thing. Uh, and I think uh, certainly establishing, you know, the connectivity that the National Film Festival can now have to distribution mm -hmm. as a result of the relationship with FilmCom. So that, you know, if we develop actually a greater profile around this region, and around the country, to filmmakers and to investors, uh, those, that's the kind of public that we need to know about what we're doing. So we actually have people on the equity side, the lender side, who can actually provide the financing right. for, for uh, projects for capitalizing new television programming, for t capitalizing, you know, the uh, sort of the seeds of a, of a new television concept, whether it's scripted or unscripted. Uh, that's the kind of real PR that we need, and hopefully you can help us with that. Well, well, I mean, I can definitely understand where you're coming from. It seems that your focus has been, which I love as a musician as well, on getting the artists, be it a filmmaker or a screenwriter or whatever it may be, off the ground and in front of the right people to make a film. Um, but as a Nashville resident and a lover of movies, I sure would like to know a whole lot more about the festival and how we can go and watch movies and be involved and all those different things which I don't know. So I feel like there is a gap that can be bridged with 
PR that could perhaps nurture both things. And That's the job of Talkopolis. Well, absolutely, and we're trying to do that right now. But I think also someone like Mike can have a great insight into those sort of things. There must be, I mean, you must come across a bunch of those sort of projects where things are actually going really well and they're simmering along and they've got everything in place, which is perfect. Most people go the other way around, bang the pots and pans and then don't know what to do when everything happens. Right. It seems like we're poised with the trigger cocked, so to speak, and it, we can sort of make this go in all kinds of directions. How do you feel about it? Well, I think that's right, and I think both from, uh, from the private sector and the public sector. The public sector, I think we have good support from the state. We certainly have good support from Metro Nashville, uh, and I'm sure Memphis and other places are contributing. But unless you're telling the st story to the public in this day of let's figure out a way to cut budgets, and they're going down the list and they see film commission, <laughs> you, know, let's, you know, I don't know, I haven't heard anything that they're doing. Block your ears, mate. Or that I haven't heard much about what they're doing. I think it's really important to, to trumpet what's going on mm -hmm. because I think there are a lot of good things going on, and I think that the uh, the the industry is sees Na Nashville and Tennessee as an important place to do business, but that story needs to be told on a wider scale. And mm. I know you guys have limited resources for that kind of thing, and uh, and I know the state has limited resources for that kind of thing, but you don't want to end up on the cutting room floor when the budget is drawn because this this needs to go this way and not that way in, in my opinion i think that the the intangibles first of all the the image that it helps bring to nashville and the state of tennessee by having these films done here are, are just tremendously valuable and and something you can't really put a pencil to but then the the, the taxes the, the hotel motel taxes the the uh, the spending that goes on during these films that the, the catering, the uh, all the crew that's hired. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mentioned that that, that on the, the website for the film commission, they have a directory of all the people available, and it's over 2,000 people and companies in Tennessee who do this, and and it's important to keep them busy. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not totally relying on this; they have other projects too, but it's important to keep that industry thriving. And I think we've got great professionals. Uh, willing to do this and, and, and eager to do it, we just need to tell the story. Well, there's a reason this, the city spent $20 million to keep Nashville here for two seasons, so it must generate so much revenue in the other facets in the community, for sure, and have a, a real spill around. Um, that, that funding, uh, I just want to clarify, is coming from the state of Tennessee. Yes. So the, the, the Tennessee has provided, uh, they're basically, uh, when, when Nashville first was brought to the state of Tennessee, we had a 32% uh, combined uh, rebate mm -hmm. uh, that it, that was basically uh, you know from the through the Tennessee Film Commission a 17 percent chunk and that included involving uh, percentages for cast and for crew uh, and then there was a 15 percent component that came out of ECD basically that involved like relocating something in the state of Tennessee so the national series originally came here based upon a 32 percent uh, incentive uh, there were some overhauls made and some improvements made uh, in the Tennessee Film Commission the way that the current administration approached it, so now it's down to 25%. Mm -hmm. Some of the discussions that were had last year were about you know being able to keep the series here because we have a 25%, uh, it's now down to 25%. But the reality is that you know the uh, national series is recognized as a, a revenue generator for tourism dollars, so it's not simply a, let me put it this way, in addition to hiring local crew mm -hmm. and all the multiples of hotels and, uh, and construction and everything else that's done, the reality is that the wisdom of Mayor Dean and the wisdom of the state of Tennessee, the governor and ECD and everybody there and Bob Rains is that, uh, and Susan Whitaker in tourism, is that you know when you have a basically a positive values show, a one hour program, 22, episodes of that uh, you know per season they understand the cost of one minute of prime time advertising mm -hmm. yeah if you understand the cost of one minute of prime time advertising and you multiply that by 60 minutes and you multiply that by 22 they realize that the investment they're making by contributing 25 percent of the in-state spend which is about 44 million per season mm -hmm. that they drop in the state of Tennessee is worth it because they knew if they had to try to buy that airtime to advertise Nashville, 
uh, that it would be a heck of a lot more expensive. Excuse oh, yeah. my language. What we're what they're you know hopefully looking for is uh, you know something analogous for Memphis, something analogous for Knoxville, something analogous for other parts of Tennessee, so that you basically are delivering positive programming that you know is vertically integrated with the idea of having a great program that hires people, but also promotes the heck out of each of those realms of the state. That would be the ideal circumstance. And Mayor Dean and Butch and everybody in the administration here has been highly, highly supportive of uh, the Nashville series. And they've, by the way, been extremely supportive of FOMCOM. Mm -hmm. Mayor Dean has been at every one of our events and has been a, a real champion of, of the growth of film and television in, in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was sent something from the Film Commission this morning that talked about a show called Quarry over in Memphis. Mm -hmm. HBO Cinemax series, and that actually is a, a higher budget and in 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 a bigger project than even the, even the Nashville program mm -hmm. is. So Memphis appears to have something going too. And, and to Andy's point, the more of these we can get, the better it is. And, and it, it's just you can't buy that kind of advertising. And, and Steve Buchanan and others here that have done the Nashville series have made sure, even though there's a lot of soap opera sh stuff going on <laughs> during the show that the, the image Nashville projects is, is tremendous. The, some, of the, some of the film work in that is really, really impressive, I think. It's awesome. Well, I don't think anyone can argue with that. And this is just the start of a great discussion that will continue in a series moving forward. And thanks to these gentlemen for coming in today and, and sharing their insights. These gentlemen will be joining us again. Um, as we've said, we've got this, this bubbling concoction ready to go in Nashville and the trigger is cocked. And I think if we can get, all get on the same team and we can cause a bit of a stir, we can move this forward and get some other people into the town and the state and making some great film. So um, we'll see you guys again. Thank you.